I have owned the Sony ZV-1 for, gosh, almost four years, and I've done everything with it, from client shoots to YouTube videos to fun hobby videos, and this sat in the front pouch of my camera bag for many years. I've owned and shot with the OP3 for not as long, but I'm definitely excited about its image quality performance, its compactfulness, and its stabilization system. The question is, will I replace the ZV-1 with the Osmo Pocket 3? That will be revealed to you very soon, my friend, but first, let me tell you about both. Both cameras have a one inch sensor, and I wanna see how well the eight bit footage out of the ZV-1 holds up compared to the 10 bit footage out of the OP3. I mean, I'm hoping that the ZV-1 does well, coming in almost $230 more than the OP3 with no accessories, but I'm not holding my breath. I took both of these out to the streets to see how they would perform in a real world situation and inside a studio setting where we can't make any excuses. See if you can identify which of these cameras got these shots. And while you try to solve the puzzle, I'll tell you what I'll be covering today. We're gonna look at how they both handle low light situations, and then we're gonna go outside at night when the moon is out and see how they both look in dark environments. And then the next day, we'll go back outside when the sun is high in the sky and shoot in an uncontrolled lighting environment. We'll go back inside after that and do some product shots in a controlled lighting environment. We're gonna check to see how good the stabilization is on both of these cameras while we're hand holding the cameras and walking. We're gonna do some green screen work. We're gonna shoot in both log profiles to see which one looks better after they're color graded. We're gonna put them both into auto exposure and see how they both handle the different lighting situations that we throw at them. We're gonna go full manual and we're gonna see what type of cinematic shots we can get. We will also check out their dynamic range. We're gonna see what their colors look like in a normal color profile setting. We're gonna do some photography, but I must warn you, I'm a video first creator. We're gonna to listen to their native audio sounds and then what they sound like when we hook them up to wireless mics. And we're just gonna go outside and have some fun with them. If your mind is already made up in your team OP3, then I created a course on how I set mine up for cinematic shooting, how I use it in different lighting situations, and how to get the most out of it complete with project files. I'll leave a link to that course in the description. But for now, we will be talking about my experience with both of these cameras and which camera is for whom. This video aims to lay out my experience with the OP3 against the experience with the ZV-1. And then you'll have better purchasing information. I shot a lot with both of these cameras to see what I could find besides what is advertised and marketed on the company's websites so I could share with you my user experience. I can confidently say that I have figured out exactly how to expose both of these cameras to get their highest potential image quality and also where they start to have their limitations. But before we jump around, let's get our ducks in a row so we don't end up leaving you more confused than you were before you got here. And that's what we will be covering today on the Film Alliance. I will be scattering those comparison shots throughout this video as I talk about them. I'll also put some full screenshots into this video so you can really see the detail of both cameras. Tell me if you knew which one was which and how you knew. If you could pick out which one was which, then you did better than I did, although there were some shots that I could definitely tell, especially with the moving shots. But the actual image quality didn't differ too much for me unless we hit some certain lighting situations. For example, look at how the light is spread across both sensors in these shots when we zoom in and pause the video. I like how the light is spread across the pixels of the ZV-1, but I like the color out of the light of the OP3 better, but it's things like that that I like to zoom in on and truly really try to see the differences between both of these cameras. And if by the end of this video, you still don't know which camera is better for you, I made a free camera quiz that may put you on the right track and I'll leave a link to that quiz in the description. But for now, let's just talk about the pricing and release dates. The Osmo Pocket 3 is currently selling for $519 US body only, and it was released in October of 2023. And at the time of recording this video, the Sony ZV-1 is selling for $748 US body only. Well, I shouldn't say body only because you get a few accessories with both boxes, but it's not much. You can also pick up the Creator Combo Kit for the OP3, which will run you an extra $150 approximately US, but that does come with the DJI Mic 2 and an extra battery and a wide angle adapter and a few other accessories. As someone who owns the Creator Combo Kit, I can tell you that to me, it is worth the extra money. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about both of these cameras. 
Both cameras would be considered great beginner cameras. They both have fixed lenses, meaning you cannot remove the lenses that they come with. Both are marketed towards beginners, vloggers, and content creators. But don't think for one second that that's all you could use them for. As I said, I've used the ZV-1 in client head shoots, and I would absolutely use the OP-3 if I ever needed to. Both are very capable cameras. From here on out, I'm gonna call the Osmo Pocket 3 the Pocket 3. The Pocket 3 has active track and the ZV-1 has touch tracking. Active track will allow you to lock onto something in the frame, like your face if you're filming a vlog or a product if you're doing some type of product shoot, and it will keep the subject in the center of the frame moving on the gimbal. The ZV-1 does not have such a feature because it doesn't come with the gimbal, but it does have touch tracking so you can touch the screen and it will focus on whatever the box is focused on. If you're a slow motion shooter, then you might want to go with the ZV-1 because it has something called HFR mode or high frame rate mode where you can shoot 960 frames per second. Now your resolution will go down to 720p, but as long as you light your images properly, you won't have too much of an issue because you can always upscale that to 4K in post-production. I made an entire video on the slow motion capabilities of the ZV-1 and I'll leave that video in the description. You can shoot in 4K up to 120 with the Pocket 3 and that will give you slow motion, but it's not as slow as that 960 frames per second that you get with the ZV-1. But we will get into frame rates and resolutions later in this video. You can manually expose both of these cameras. But the only way to expose the Pocket 3 in camera is through the display and then you change the settings with the touchscreen. Whereas the ZV-1 you can do it with the buttons and dials on the outside of the camera. A lot of people prefer using physical buttons and dials rather than having to jump into the display or the menu system to change their exposure. I find it a lot easier to use the ZV-1 when it comes to controlling my exposure. Also, when it comes to exposure, the ZV-1 has different exposure tools like a histogram that you can get on the display. Whereas if you want to use the histogram with the Pocket 3, you'll have to connect a smartphone and use the MIMO app. Up until now, you've been looking at all the image quality shots that I got between both of these cameras in all different lighting environments. So you can be the judge on which one you think produces a better looking image. I personally think the Pocket 3 delivers a way better image quality and I believe that has to do with the sensor and the way that it handles those blacks. You can really tell a big difference between these two cameras in low light situations and when we're shooting in nighttime environments. But I could also see a big difference in the colors when I was in a controlled lighting environment, like when I was filming my color board. The Pocket 3 shoots 10-bit footage, which means it will have a better image quality on paper than the ZV-1's 8-bit footage. But the ZV-1 has a built-in ND filter, which you can use use when you're in super sunny environments and you don't want to crank up the shutter speed or the aperture or mess around with those exposure settings too much. If you want to use filters with the Pocket 3, you'll have to buy some third-party NDs and if you do that, make sure to get the proper ones because there are filters on the market that will not close up your Pocket 3 when you turn it on and off because the space between the camera and the back of the gimbal is too small. This means that you would have to put on and take off the ND filters every single time you use it. Thanks to you guys, I found some filters that are slim enough to fit into that gap and I'll leave the proper size ND filters in the description below. Just remember though, there's one negative to external ND filters. You could lose them, whereas you won't lose the ND filter inside the ZV-1 because it's internal. The Pocket 3 is a camera lens built on a miniature gimbal, so you're gonna get a mechanical stabilization compared to the digital stabilization out of the ZV-1. I'll be the first to tell you that the stabilization out of the ZV-1 is pretty bad. I always recommend people to pick up a gimbal if they go with the ZV-1 if they want smooth footage. But now you're looking at an extra couple hundred bucks and you're compromising your portability, whereas the Pocket 3 has a gimbal already attached to it. Another negative to the ZV-1 is when you turn on active stabilization, you get a pretty good sized crop because of its digital stabilization. So that means you won't be able to use the ZV-1 for proper looking vlog shots without it punching in so close to your face and just making the entire shot look bad in my opinion. So if you want to do that, you'll have to turn off stabilization, but then you'll just have a bunch of shaky footage. I think this would be a great vlog camera as long as you're not walking or moving. If you are a vlogger, then I would definitely go with the Pocket 3 because of the 20 millimeter lens and the fact that it doesn't have any digital stabilization, meaning it's all mechanical and you're not going to get any crop. If you get the Creator Combo Kit for the Pocket 3, it will also come with the DJI Mic 2. Before I let you hear what that sounds like, let's listen to the native audio out of both of these cameras. This is what the audio sounds like without any DJI Mic 2 mic system hooked up to the Osmo Pocket. It's about three feet away from me right now, and we're outside in the ambient noise, and the camera holder I think right now is covering both, or all three mic holes. Can you make sure that you're not covering the three mic holes? 
And here's the audio test without the mic system hooked up, just so you can see how bad the audio is when the camera itself is about four feet away from me. Now let's take a listen to both of these cameras, what they sound like when you hook up a wireless mic system to them. For the Osmo Pocket 3, it's the DJI Mic 2, which automatically connects to it. And for the ZV-1, I'm using the Chanel AWS-24G, which costs about 200 bucks, and I'll leave a link to that one in the description in case you already own the ZV-1 and want better audio. Now let's take a moment to not only listen to the audio out of the Osmo Pocket 3 with the DJI Mic 2, but also to thank PGY Tech for sponsoring this video. They sent me over this bag, which is the OneGo Solo V2 camera bag about a month ago, and they said, just use it however I like it. On a side note, they also sent me the OneMo 2 camera bag, which is my go-to camera bag when I have extra gear. You may have seen it in some of my videos. So I'm very familiar with PGY Tech, their products, and their durability. They also sent me two other bags, the OneGo and the OneGo shoulder bag. And coincidentally, I actually ended up using this OneGo bag as an alternative to that little DJI Osmo Pocket tote bag that they gave me with the Creator Combo Kit. The OneGo Solo V2 bag, which is the sponsorship of this video, has an expansive opening where you can just open it up and look right inside and quickly be able to see everything that's in there. It also comes with dividers to make it a more organizational experience and you can kind of slot out where you want things to go. The shoulder pad is very comfortable compared to other camera bags that I've used in the past and I would highly recommend this bag for anybody who's on the go like I am. Normally when I'm on the go, I don't wanna bring a big bag with a bunch of gear in it. I wanna to try to stay as sleek and small as possible right on my hip and then throw it on my back like that so I can just keep going and not be held back by anything. All right, so there's your audio test for the Osmo Pocket 3 and also the sponsor mentioned for PGY Tech. I will leave a link to this bag in the description. This is what the audio would sound like if I had the AWS 24G Sennel hooked up to the ZV-1 uh, compared to just shooting with the native mic that's straight in the ZV-1. Right now the camera's about five feet away from me and it gives you a little bit more bass tones in the audio. One thing to note is when you have the Mic 2 hooked up to the Pocket 3, then you're gonna get audio levels on the screen of the Pocket 3 so you can see, make sure you're not peaking at all. You do get audio levels on the ZV-1. In fact, I even set up one custom button so I could easily see it, turn it on and turn it off. That way I can make sure that my audio levels are good and I'm not peaking or I'm not too low. I also love how the Pocket 3 has a built-in receiver for that wireless mic system, whereas with the ZV-1, I have to hook up an external wireless receiver into the mic port of the ZV-1. But that does bring up the next point, which is the ZV-1 has a mic port and an HDMI out. And I'll add one more to it. It has a quarter mount thread on the bottom of the camera so you can automatically attach it to a tripod. Whereas the Pocket 3 does not, you have to add a little attachment square to the bottom of it. And if you don't bring that with you, you're gonna find yourself in a situation that I find myself in, where I literally just had to place it on top of a tripod and hope that the wind doesn't blow it over. So that's a pretty important thing. I wish it was on the Pocket 3, but it's not. But the fact that you get a mic port on the ZV-1 and HDMI out really opens up the doors if you want to start doing filmmaking or professional client work. I would use this in professional client work, maybe not for a headshot, but definitely get the B-roll. One more point on the DJI Mic 2, it also saves internal recording in case your audio feed is going crazy or it has a hissing noise, you can always refer back to that external audio. I did a review where I covered a lot more of this stuff about the DJI Mic 2, and I'll leave that in the description in case you're interested. Other than the price, this is probably one of the biggest differences between these two cameras. The Pocket 3 only has a joystick and one record button, whereas the ZV-1 has many more buttons and customization. If you want more control over your exposure without having to jump into the menu system, then pick up the ZV-1 because you can set up almost everything from the outside of the camera and the function menu, and rarely do I ever have to dive into the menu system. I don't have to dive into the menu system on the OP3 either, mainly because I set up its five presets or memories as preset exposure settings that I can jump into if I'm in certain lighting conditions. Either way, sometimes I find myself having to jump into the menu on the Pocket 3 for unforeseen circumstances, and that takes a little bit longer, whereas I have everything that I need on the outside of the ZV-1, which gives me more exposure control. When it comes to portability and trying to be conspicuous in public, the Pocket 3 would be the way to go because it's much thinner and you can hold it vertical while you're still filming horizontal, whereas if you have something like this, it might attract more attention. If you like the simplicity 
simplicity of pulling your camera straight out of the box and going out and shooting with it, then the Pocket 3 will be your choice because of the lack of buttons and dials, and it's just super easy to use and underwhelming, especially for beginners. The Pocket 3 has a fixed 20 millimeter lens and a fixed aperture of f2.0, whereas the Sony ZV-1 has a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens, f1.4. This makes a huge, is it f1.4 or f1.8? I think it's f1.8. This makes a huge difference when it comes to what you're filming and whether or not you need to get close to your subject or not. That's one of the reasons why I love the ZV-1 so much, because I could just stand in one spot and still zoom in on certain things that I needed to. If you need to get close up with the Pocket 3, the wide lens just won't do it. Let's also not forget that you can purchase multiple batteries pretty cheaply for the ZV-1 compared to purchasing extra batteries for the Pocket 3. However, the battery on the Pocket 3 lasts way longer than what you get with the ZV-1. I get about an hour of shooting with each one of these batteries that come with the ZV-1, whereas this thing would take me almost through the entire day of moderate shooting. That speaks volumes about how much longer this battery lasts than the ZV-1. And when you get the Creator Combo Kit for the Pocket 3, you'll be able to shoot even longer. When we're talking about green screen, the 10-bit footage out of the Pocket 3 compared to the 8-bit footage out of the ZV-1 will always be better. But I've been very surprised lately as I do my green screen work, how good 8-bit footage really does look as long as you light the green screen properly. I was pleasantly surprised to see how good the ZV-1 did. This is an important test for me because I like using green screens. I think it opens up the door for more creative options. Either way, I would not tell you that green screen work is not possible with the ZV-1. The Pocket 3 does produce a better looking green screen, especially when you zoom in. But for videos that I create that I upload to YouTube, they get compressed anyways, so I don't think it will be too much of an issue between using the ZV-1 and the Pocket 3 when it comes to green screen. One thing that will make a difference is the frame rates and resolution. The big difference between the Pocket 3 and the ZV-1 is the frame rates and resolution. The Pocket 3 can shoot in 4K up to 120, and the ZV-1 can shoot in 4K up to 30. You can shoot in 1080, 60 on both of them and then upscale it in post-production, but I find that shooting in 4K in camera always produces the best results. If you were a 4K 24 shooter, then you would not have an issue with either of these cameras. But if you wanna shoot in 4K up to 60 or up to 120, then you're gonna to wanna to go with the Pocket 3. That's one of the reasons why I picked up the Pocket 3 and why I love it so much. I believe the low light shots that I was getting with the OP3 are a lot better than the ZV-1 and this is especially noticeable in higher ISO ranges like when I was shooting in the 800 range. Also I like to look at the flares around the lights and with the Pocket 3 they were just more realistic looking, more cinematic so to speak, than what you would get with the ZV-1. But they do seem to have a blue cast to them. I wasn't using any filters so this is what I was getting straight out of camera but I kind of like that cooler look. I was manually exposing both of these cameras but I I could have used the Pocket 3's low light mode, but when you turn on the low light mode on the Pocket 3, you lose the ability to shoot in D-Log, which I think is a huge help in a low light situation. So it's unfortunate that we lose D-Log, but you can shoot in regular video mode and that's what I prefer to shoot in anyways with the Pocket 3 and then just dial in my own settings. I did an entire module in my course on low light and that's where I dive deeper on how I set up the OP3 for low light shooting instead of using the low light video mode. With the ZV-1 in low light, I get way better results than when I shoot in the normal color profile. But that brings us to log. For this video, I thought the 10-bit D-Log footage out of the Pocket 3 would be much better than the 8-bit Sony ZV-1 footage, but I was surprised to see how well the 8-bit footage held up against the Pocket 3. I'm a big proponent of shooting in log footage, especially when you're shooting a multi-sequence video in different lighting conditions or you're using two different cameras. This way you can make sure you can get your colors to match up better in post-production than the normal color profile that you would get if you just shot straight out of camera. And when I do that, the videos that I create, the clips back to back have better continuity, consistency, and colors. If you're intimidated by log footage, you can always shoot in Cine 2 on the ZV-1, which is a picture profile, I think number six. And I actually created a custom profile within Cine 2, the picture profile number six that gives you Kind of like an s cinetone look. As far as D-Log M footage goes out of the Pocket 3, I can say it's the easiest log footage that I've ever worked with when it comes to color grading. It would be a great first step for a beginner if they want to dive into the world of log shooting. Some people actually like the way that it looks without any color grade, just having that washed out artistic look. Either way, once you start playing around with the colors in Final Cut Pro, you'll easily be able to color grade your footage, and I think you'll probably like it. 
Now let's talk about photography. I'm not a photographer, but I did take some shots with both of these cameras and I think they both did great. I'm not gonna dive deeply into photography because I mainly shoot video, but I wanted to include this in this comparison for those of you who do photography. I know both of these cameras have advertised megapixels, but I like to see once I take a shot, once we zoom in, which one of the two images start to fall apart. Because to me, I'm interested in their detail. If you want a camera that will give you more customization on the outside of the camera and easier control when it comes to exposure, then go with the ZV-1. But if you want something that's small, compact, easy to use, gives you a great image quality, then go with the Pocket 3. Either one of these cameras will be great for you no matter what you're using them for. I do think a beginner or someone who wants the straight out of the box, great image quality should go with the Pocket 3. And I think someone who likes an actual camera in their hands, being able to have mic input or HDMI out, somebody with more exposure controls, more customization for exposure, then I would go with the ZV-1. I think both cameras are good for different uses, but I think the Pocket 3 Creator Combo Kit blows the ZV-1 out of the water. The tracking for the self-shoot videos is really useful for solo creators. I've also been using it on a manual slider to get some pretty awesome looking product shots, and I think it's just awesome. The DJI Mic 2's 32-bit float audio recording directly to the DJI Mic 2's onboard storage is just like icing on the cake. I prefer the Pocket 3 because I believe you have more creative freedom being able to walk around with it, get that 10-bit footage, and also have it be way less conspicuous if you're out in a public space. So I'm sorry to say all my ZV-1 fans, but I will be replacing it with the Pocket 3. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.